Hey everyone, Alex Ionescu here, welcome to Investor's Guide to the Galaxy. Adobe announcing Firefly AI Generative Fill for Photoshop and my opinion about the company and Adobe stock. Although before we start, if you find this video helpful, it would mean a lot to me if you crashed that like button and subscribed to my channel. It's totally free and takes just a split second. If you want to show more appreciation, consider subscribing to my Patreon. Now let's dive right into it. Adobe stock price. Yesterday down 0.44%, year to date up 10%, past year down 7%, past 5 years up 52%. Adobe Firefly is a family of creative generative AI models coming to Adobe products like Photoshop. It's a new generative AI service across Adobe's cloud. Firefly will offer new ways to ideate, create and communicate while significantly improving creative workflows. Now let's take a look at what it can do in this Now let's listen to Adobe CEO Shantanu Narayan talking about Firefly AI. After that, we will see some financial information about the company and my opinion. Joining us now exclusively, Adobe CEO Shantanu Narayan. Shantanu, you're not doing rolling this out to make dragons outside convenience stores in Photoshop. This is more about uh, you know erasing things out of image, doing simpler uh, fills, more basic things that Photoshop can do using AI to speed up the process for artists as you start to roll this into your core products, right? Well, John, as you said, it really is a watershed moment uh, for, I think, the future of creative cloud. Uh, you know, we've had this vision of unleashing creativity for all. And a lot of uh, conversation has happened about generative AI and how generative AI can accelerate the creative process. But that's not adequate. And what you really need is a product like Photoshop, where you can integrate generative AI into what you're trying to edit. And so... Uh, when we showed uh, what we have done with integration into Photoshop uh, with Firefly, I mean, people's jaws just drop uh, because it now finally is that co-pilot, the creative co-pilot that allows somebody who's creative to uh, verbalize what they want to do, bring it into Photoshop, and then Photoshop does its magic as it relates to precision. So uh, I think it's a watershed moment for us, and it's just uh, really exciting to see how we're accelerating innovation in this exciting new space. So, Shantanu, we always try to look out for investors as well. And so let's talk about potential financial impacts of this. Do you expect this to grow the number of users who can get financial benefit out of a Creative Cloud subscription? So do you expect more, um, more market opportunity for Creative Cloud out of this primarily? Or is this mainly going to make existing subscribers more productive lower churn and increase margins that way? The two words that I think of, John, when I think about what the potential of generative AI is within our applications is both accelerant, uh, which is what you referred to, making the current creative professional so much more productive. And therefore, if they're more productive, they can take on more tasks and therefore make more money. But I also think of it as being accessible. And that, I think, is the holy grail. I mean, for us, making our products more accessible uh, because everybody has this story to tell, uh, we think there are a billion people who wish to express themselves. And what we have done with Firefly, what we are doing with Express, the partnerships that we've announced with companies like Google really is going to bring creativity uh, to all. And so I do think it's both uh, accessible, but it's also accelerant. Now, lay out for me what Adobe is doing with AI because there's more to it 
than generative, right? We've talked in the past about Adobe Sensei. Uh, people who are using Adobe Premiere know that you can auto-generate transcripts and captioning. Uh, you rolled that out, I think, about a year ago. It's enormously useful for people who work with video a lot, as I personally know. But what are the buckets that you put this AI R&D into, and how are you thinking about how they're going to add value in terms of uh, revenue to the suite going forward? It's a great question, John. And uh, as you point out, we have been investing in Adobe Sensei, which allows you to do so much magic. I mean, things like when you are in a video uh, production process, as you mentioned, and you've edited one frame and you want that editing of the one frame to then extend into the entire video, our artificial intelligence technology, Adobe Sensei, allows you uh, to make that happen across every single frame without your having to manually do it, saving you hours in the process. As it relates to generative AI specifically, uh, I would say there are three layers to that, John. I mean, there's the data layer, and Adobe is so differentiated in that we have so much data. And we've also taken a very differentiated approach in terms of training our models uh, with data that we have commercial license for. The second layer to generative AI is about these foundation models. And there are very few companies on the planet, Adobe is certainly one of them, that can invest in a foundational model for imaging. And so we've done that. You can expect to see us do the same for vector and animation and 3D and, and video. And then there's the interface layer, which is how are people going to then access it and how does that magic become usable uh, for folks? So when we think about AI and specifically generative AI, I think it's the combination that Adobe has the data, we have the models and we've invested in these core foundation models, and then the surfaces that people can use, the interfaces, whether that's Illustrator or Photoshop or Premiere, that's where the magic comes to life for a customer. Uh, and the generative AI is specifically called Firefly. All the umbrella technology that we've developed is called Adobe Sensei. Adobe Creative Cloud Adoption grows to nearly 30 million paid members. So this is just an estimation. At the end of 2020, management said that the Creative Cloud business has grown 85% from 2017. When analysts pegged the number of CC paid subscribers at 12 million. So doing the math and updating for year end 2022, this gives an estimated new total of nearly 30 million subscribers. This is well over double the number from five years ago and up approximately 3.5 million users from last year, meaning the run rate of new subscriptions is close to 1 million per quarter, adding an average of 10,000 net new paid members every day for the CC 2023 product line. Now let's take a look a little bit into detail at Adobe. Revenue of Q1 2023 was 4.6 billion dollars and compared to 2022 4.2 billion dollars and their majority of revenue comes from subscription based revenue so 4.3 subscription based product 120 million services and others 162 so this is the main revenue source subscription and that's good net income for q1 2023 was $1.247 billion compared to $1.266 billion in 2022, a slight decrease in net income. Market cap of Adobe is $169 billion. P ratio trailing 12 months is 36.46. They don't have the dividend. So if you look at the PE, it's not cheap. Yeah, but if you look at the forward PE, it's kind of cheap, 23 peg ratio, five year, 1.57. Price to book value, 11.72. Profit margin, very good, 26.32%. Quarterly revenue growth, year over year, 9.2%. Percent held by institutions, 85.7%. Hmm, that's way too much. What I do like about this company is that the profit margin is 26 and they have a subscription model something interesting that the ceo said he thinks 1 billion people can use this software that's a big total addressable market 
I'm a bit skeptic about this. I don't think 1 billion can use Adobe. But if there are a couple of hundred million users, that's great. So Adobe can grow their business in the future. Nowadays, any company that wants to survive the next 10 years should use AI in some form. I think Adobe integrated AI very well. They've done amazing stuff. Kudos to them. Compared to other companies who stick the words artificial intelligence to their name just to get noticed by investors or have greater valuation on the stock market but really don't do anything new. The company looks good to own. But I have some issues with it. First thing is that it has a lot of institutional investors already. 85% of the company is owned already by institutional investors. It's not a rule of thumb. But for me, it says, I'm late to the game in a company if the majority of investors are institutional. This is just my opinion. And of course, this is bad because when some institutions decide to sell the stock, it can have some negative impact on the stock price. The second one is more serious one. I don't see Adobe having a very good moat around it. It's great they innovate with AI tools, but nowadays everybody can make an AI software tool. In my opinion, there will be a spike in startups that use AI in some way or another, and the graphics niche will be one of them. So there will be a lot of competition coming. It's a great company, but for this reason, I'm a little concerned about their ability to maintain revenue growth in the long run. Maybe I'm wrong and would like to know a different opinion, so please leave a comment below. If you like this video, please smash the like button so that other people like you see this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. I appreciate all of you that watch my videos. See you next time.